Hey friends, it's Carol Saltbox Stitcher back for uh, another video. This is episode... Um, just a minute, we turned the vacuum on. Uh, 73. I think that was staged. I don't think he's really vacuuming. <laughs> but anyway, in case you didn't hear him, that was ep it's episode number 73. So... Um, I know I say this often, but this really is going to be a shorter video because I have to be out at my daughter's in a little over an hour, hour and 10 minutes, and she lives 15 minutes away. So, um, Thursday was my granddaughter Camille's seventh birthday, no, Wednesday, no, Thursday. So it was her golden birthday, which means that she turned seven and her birthday is on the 7th of July. So whenever your birth day date matches your age, that's called your golden birthday. Well, for her, she had an extra special one because it's the month is seven. So seven, seven, seven. <laughs> Perfect number. Anyway, <clears throat> so today is her birthday party with her friends. And it's going to be a tea party. So I'm going out to help. The little girls are going to have hats and beads and probably makeup because at age seven, they always want to wear lots of makeup. But anyway, so I got to go do that. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, what have I been stitching on? Uh, I actually had four finishes in the last two weeks. So I'm going to show you those. But first, I'm going to show you... Um, this is your grand old flag by samplers not forgotten this was a um, kit that i got from country sampler not recently a couple years ago um, and i kind of had thought i might restart it i didn't know if i liked it well when i was there at country sampler last in the last month whenever I was there <laughs> I saw it on the wall framed and I thought oh I need to get back to that I do like it so this is where I am I've been working on the house and mostly I've been working on those windows filling in so I did the window frames I guess they are and then I did the whole section here that's the part of the bricks so I still have a lot of fill in to do and the house goes up probably another five rows here and then you have the roof or the um it's like a two-part roof so you have this part and then the top and then i'll have all the flowers so i i have a long way to go all the flowers on the border the flower pots the words in the alphabet for me go fast and there's no over one so um that is one of the things i worked on and i'm gonna have my husband insert a picture here <laughs> of the one that's on the wall at country sampler so um let's see what the time is three or four minutes in so anyway that's one of the things i picked up that i worked on in the last two weeks these are the threads but again it's a conversion from country sampler so you'd have to call them and i i presume they probably still have kits but i'm not 100 percent sure so check with them on that and then last time i was almost finished with this which is plum street Sam whoops, let me take it out of the plastic. I always debate, should I take it out of the plastic? And the answer should always be yes, because otherwise there's a glare and it's kind of annoying. Okay, so this is Sampler House 3 by Plum Street. It says you're a grand old flag. The red house, the trees, the bunting. I went into a lot, lot of detail last one on what I changed. 
But basically, the main thing I changed was instead of doing two different whites, it calls for antique lace and what's the other one? Um, no, I lied. This one I used the exact what it called for. It's the other one I'm going to show you that I changed. Sampler House 3 by Plum Street. It's finished. I'll probably make it into some sort of small. Um, it would be cute framed. I don't know. We'll see. So that's one finish. And the next finish, and I was almost done with this last time. I had the over one to do. I'll hold it this way first so you can see the name. This is Plum Street Liberty Inn. And this is what it looks like. And I went into pretty good detail last time about this bottom bunting on the fence and the color changes. It called for, um, it called for wood rose to use as the red in the stripes on the flag and all of that. And I chose not to do that in wood rose. Now, I still kept some of the wood rose on the door and in some of the uh, stars, but basically I changed the red parts, what you would think traditionally red, like on the flag and the bunting. I changed to use the um, called for cherry bark, which was called for on the flowers. And then instead of the two whites, one being shaker white and one being oatmeal, I used all whitewashed by weeks. And so here's my finish of that one. Liberty Inn by Plum Street. And the over one, it says uh, One Nation Under God right there. It's kind of hard to see. Anyway, 1776, One Nation Under God. So the whites, I used all whitewash and the reds in the flag and the bunting i used all the cherry bark that it calls for just on the flowers instead of the wood rose so that was finish number two and those were almost finished when i showed them to you last time and then i had this piece that i had started this is called flag folk it's by not forgotten farm i really like this i think this is adorable Oops. And I had bought a kit from Country Sampler for this one on murky. It was 32 count murky in the kit. And it was a conversion, their, their color conversion. Although I don't think they changed a whole lot. But anyway, so this is where I was. I remember saying I didn't like it. I don't know. I don't think I used the 32 count, but I think this is 36 murky, but I just don't like the way this one is printed. Some of the murky is a little bit more subtle. To me, this is a really splotchy. So I didn't want to do it on that. And what I think I'll do, you know, when I get in another life, when I have a lot of time, is just square this up with these the stripes and, you know, in other words, do a mirror image down here and make it into a small. I think that'd be cute. That way I won't waste it. So instead, I chose to do it on a piece of 36 Count Heroic by Picture This Plus. And Heroic, I'll show you the whole piece so you can get a feel for it. Heroic has blue and red, but it's really subtle. So this is my finished piece, Flag Folk. So this was a restart and a finish in the last two weeks. So that came out nice. So that's Flag Folk, Not Forgotten Farm. You can buy this, I think, as a PDF or as a um, pattern. And on, she sells through her... Um, 
I think it's a website versus it's not an Etsy. I don't think it doesn't say on the pattern, but I got my kit from Country Sampler. And all I changed was the fabric to the heroic. I love these little people. <laughs> They're fun. So this one, I, I do believe I'll frame. It's big enough. I, I thought about doing a stand up, but I think I'll frame it because I think it's cute and it needs to be framed. So that was finish number three. And then I started this 1864 house sampler. Um, this was also a kit that I got. I didn't get these kits recently. This is from times past. Time, times past. <laughs> oh, that sounds just so classic. Anyway, it's called the 1864 house sampler and it's by Chessie and me. Sorry, it's kind of a glary. And I finished it last night at 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> I'll, I worked on it a little bit during um, yesterday during the day. I went to stitch with some friends. So this is 1864 house sampler. It's on 35 count tin roof by Weeks. And this again was a kit, but I think that I changed out because it was, I don't know. I think the piece of tin roof I had was like 32 counts, so I changed it to the 35. So it turned out really cute. I It has some specialty stitches. It's a satin stitch on the roof. And this is a long arm cross, which she gives you really good di uh, diagrams on the border. A long arm cross and I have a frame normally this would be like a size for a small I need to cut it down put it on mat board and see but I have this frame there's no way to gracefully do this so don't be expecting a lot so I have this frame it's I think a five by six it's kind of a weird size I don't know where I got it I've had it for a long time and I really had never found anything that really would fit in it but I believe this will fit 1864 sampler house by Chessie and me so those are my four finishes and I'm anxious to get them FFO I have a whole basket plastic bin, whatever stuff. I probably have 20 different things in there that need to, that are smalls that need to be FFO'd. Some of them are different seasons, but I still, I just need to dedicate. I've, I've had a, com I've been a combination of tired. I guess I'm, all this traveling is hard when you're old and just busy, just busy, busy, busy doing quilts for people. I have two cross-stitch groups. One I didn't go to on Thursday because I had a I had a bad headache. But who cares about that? Anyway, I still may continue to do a little bit of patriotic. This is one that I showed you. We got the free pattern from Country Sampler in our um, kit from the retreat. This won't take long. And then we could buy the little kit to go with it this is 40 count I'm not sure what linen that is doesn't really matter with DMC and so that's all ready to go so I think I'll I think I'll work on this tonight and tomorrow maybe then I have this other piece that's kitted from Threadwork Primitives I had this for ever and a day it's called the Anchor of Pride Threadwork Primitives. I've always wanted to do this one. I just love that big A for anchor in that gold. I guess it's an A. Looks like an A to me. <laughs> yeah, because the alphabet starts with B. I like that penny rug it's on too. Anyway, Anchor of Pride, Threadwork Primitives. So I have this kitted with a piece of 
35, it's an, a leftover piece from a sampler, 35 count Confederate gray. And the called for Freedom, Sage, Shaker White, and Schoolhouse Red. Doesn't get any better for me than those three or four. So that is one that I, I just want to do a couple more really small pieces for the dough bowl. There was another one that was a freebie from Not Forgotten Farm that um, Christy Green did on, let's see, I don't think it was her latest video, maybe the one before that. And it's a little Uncle Sam, um, head of an Uncle Sam. And I think it's called Sammy, something Sammy. But it's a freebie on Not Forgotten Farm blog, I believe. So I don't have that here. It's on my phone, so, and it's just the chart. So anyway, check that out. Um, I did not, I don't think I got anything in the mail because, you know, I just went to a retreat and spent a fortune. But I did kit up, I'm dying to start this, but I may, I may wait. This is Live on Little by Plum Street. This is the one that just came out. Originally, it was a tr retreat piece at Amana for spring of 2021. I did not go to that retreat, so I've been waiting for this. And it just came out. I got it at Country Sampler. It calls for um, fox and rag rabbit hog bristle, which I have. And then I've kitted, and it's mostly DMC. I think there's only like one, two, three, four, five, six um, weeks. Oh, wait, and two uh, classic color works. So those are the colors. Fabulous. So, and the reason I say that I may not start that, <laughs> I did an exercise in uh, exposing my, my total craziness. I wrote down all of my whips. I had people guess yesterday, how many whips do you think I have? Uh, 10. Somebody said 70. I'm like, no, not 70, but I have a lot. So what I did, I wrote them all down by designer. So I have, I don't know, there's 13 or 14 Blackbird, um, Scarlet House, Scarlet Letter, Prairie Schooler, With Thy Needle and Thread, Shakespeare's Peddler. I'm not going to go through each one. Maybe it's Kathy Barrick. Chessie and me, Hands Across the Sea. And then I have other ones that are just like, you know, maybe one. I don't have very many of that particular designer. So that's kind of eye-opening. Now, at one point I counted and I had 50-something. I still have 50-something. But I've done others and finished them, so I guess I've started new ones, obviously, because I keep that number stays pretty true. So I pulled out ones that I'm going to show you that I'm going to work on maybe all the way through the end of September, although I may throw in some fall smalls. I don't, I don't know. A couple of these um, whips are fall, so I could do them. But I was really inspired by Yvette Gonzalez. If you follow her on Instagram, she's Yvette Go. And whenever I mention somebody that's on Instagram, sometimes they're private and you just have to request. And they, I know when mine was private before I started doing uh, floss tube, I would go to that person's site and see, are they a serial killer? Are they a crazy guy that's looking for an old, old woman to date? <laughs> you know, I don't get many of those, <laughs> thank goodness. You know, what, what is their profile to know if I wanted to let them follow me? So it behooves you to have at least a couple pictures, especially if they're stitching. Because sometimes I'll look at people, you know, I get these suggested on Instagram, follow this person. 
And you go to follow them or you go to look at them and they have, don't have any posts. Well, I don't know who they are. And, you know, they might be called Susie Jane, but it's really, you know, some crazy Zorro. <laughs> anyway, so all that to say, when I mention people on Instagram, if they are... Um, private, you may want to make sure you have something on yours so that if they want to check you out to see if you're legit, they can do that. Anyway, Yvette Gonzalez is working down her whip pile. Now, I don't know what she started with, but I think she's down to six or seven. If you go to her Instagram, oh, Lord have mercy, she has some beautiful finishes and many which are my, some of the same ones that I have that are whips. So I told myself, self, you need to get your whip at least down 10 or 12 by the end of the year. I think that's kind of legitimate. So I pulled some. This may change. I have that right. <laughs> but I pulled some that I for sure want to finish. They're all in various stages of, of completion at this point. This one is called A Thousand Hills. It's by Plum Street. I always think of it kind of as a companion to this one, which is Still Waters by Plum Street. And I love this one. Still Waters by Plum Street. I did this one in 2016, so it's been around. So, this one is A Thousand Hills by Plum Street. And this is where I am on it. So I do have some done. I'm doing this on Winter Brew 40 Count, which is the called for. And I'm using the called for threads, which are very pretty. It's kind of a, it's really a pretty palette. So that's where I am. So I want, that's definitely one I'm, and I'm not going to do any crazy plan. I'm just pulled ones that I want to work on. I may work on them until they're finished and only do three or four. I may skip around. I'm not going to boss myself for now. <laughs> this is as bossy as I'm going to get. <laughs> the next one is by Brenda Gervais. I'll hold it this way so you can see the design. It's called Needle and Thread by With Thy Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais. And this one I'm doing on 36 Count Mellow by Picture This Plus, which is the called for, and this is where I am. I'm working on her skirt. I have the grass finished. So once I get her done, you know, there's these flowers and then you sew buttons on on the, for the flowers I mean there's these well they're actually a, a spool with a plant or a growth a vine coming out of it so that is on my list to get back to there again I'm using mellow which is the called for and this one has a lot of threads that's another thing is to get, you, you know, use up some of these threads and get them back into, the, put them back in stock. <laughs> oh, work in retail. That was one of my least favorite things. You'd have returns and it'd be like, oh, I got to go take all the returns and put them back in stock. Got to find where they were. Nine times out of 10, they were from the um, sale rack. Now this one is one, and I, I've been wanting to get back to this. This came out quite a while ago. I know quite a few people have finished this. It's called The Sco Summer Schoolhouse by Brenda Gervais. And there's four patterns all together, and they're all done on 28, I think it's 28, 28 count Lugana over one. So I have a little hoop in here with it because I, I 
I can stitch over one in hand, but it looks prettier. So this is where I am on the first one. So I'm far enough on the first one, and I love, I know a lot of people have done them on, you know, 46 count or whatever to get the same look, but over two, but I really want to do them on the Lugana. So I have a big piece of Lugana. These are the threads. A lot of these are the same threads that are used in some of those other or those other pieces. So this is where I am. And so that's pattern one. This is lesson two. And this may be something that rather than go start to finish that I just work on periodically. This is lesson three. I was thinking about having these be a, like a Monday stitch. You know, like Monday morning, you got to get up and go back to school. <laughs> and then this is number four. And then this is the whole set in a box. And I also have the piece, the little wood piece for the horn book. They're still available. I know for sure they're on um, Brenda Gervais' website, which is Country Stitches Online. Country Stitches used to be the name before she went to With I Needle and Thread. That was the name of her business. She used to do a lot of doll patterns, some wool patterns before she actually did a lot of, she did some cross stitch, but. Okay, so that is a couple that I want to do. And then this is the sampler that I really, really, really want to get finished. It's by Scarlet House. I have quite a bit left. It's called Jane Cowie. So I may work on this one and just try to get some of the over one done because there is quite a big long verse on this one. I won't read it, but it's a beautiful verse. So this is where I am. I'm, I'm kind of working from the top down and the bottom up. Or I may just, you know, do all the flowers on the border. Just make progress. Make progress. That's my goal on all of these. On the smaller ones, the first few that I showed you, that needle pulling thread, or needle pulling thread, and those I really, really want to, um, Get them all the way, finish them. This is done on 40 count meadow rue, and I am using NPI silks for this one. These are those really pretty, beautiful silks. So that one I pulled that I wanna work on. And then I think every Sunday, a lot of people do a Sunday stitch. Usually we, um, what did I do with this one? Da, 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 da. Oh, there it is. Usually we go to church, we go out to eat, and then we I come home and take a nap. So it's not like I take all day Sunday to stitch. I could. I could skip the nap. So this is his eyes on the sparrow, and this I want to be my Sunday stitch. This I was this book, I had the pattern. And I was graciously gifted the book by Beth Twist. She said, oh, you need the book. You have the old pattern. You need the book. So she sent it to me. Thank you, Beth. That was very nice. These are the threads. I kind of see a theme when I start looking through so, so many of these are the colors that just, you know, I just love. So those are the threads for... Um, Oh no, I take that back. Those are the threads for Consider the Lilies, which was in the same project bag. These are the threads for His Eyes on the Sparrow. They're a little more muted than Consider the Lilies. And I would love to do Consider the Lilies, but I need to finish this one first. This is where I am on my His Eyes on the Sparrow. So I have some done, but not a lot. But when I was working, I worked on it during my five days 
each whip in May and not each whip but I picked five and I really enjoyed working this one I didn't really want to get get put it back this one I'm doing on 36 count Heartland if I picture this plus so that might be my so see I said I don't want to do a plan I don't want to tell myself what to do and here I am making a plan <laughs> it's okay and I'm going to show you just a few more um, Blackbird. And then I'm going to let you go because, like I said, life is happening today. So I have Blackbird ones that I want to work on. And a couple of them will be worked till they're finished. And a couple will just be make progress. The first one I showed you this last time, I think I've shown you on every single video. This is Come Into My Garden by Blackbird. This one is a want to finish. Hold on here. And the, this is the threads for this one. I'm using all the called for. Nobody ever talks about Nicole and her thread combing anymore. We all need to recognize that again because she's the best thread comber around. I don't know what's wrong with this straggler. <laughs> anyway, those are the threads for coming to my garden. This is where I am. I have quite a bit left to go on the border flowers, but this is a I need to finish. So this definitely will be stitch it till it's done. Oh, my nose is itching. At my friend's house, we were we had snacks and she brought some pineapple chili popcorn, kettle corn. Every time I would eat it, I would sneeze. <laughs> I sneezed and I sneezed and I sneezed. And I said, it has to be that spice or whatever that's on that. Because I'll, I'll sneeze with pepper, you know. I mean, that's kind of classic, sneezing with pepper. But anyway. So the next one is Maria Selby Humphrey by Blackbird. For sure, for sure, for sure want to get this one done. I've been working on this one for quite a while. Oh, there's another one I didn't bring. Shoot. Oh, well, I'll show you next time. So this is where I am. I really could get this done. Here's the picture again. There's, they did not stitch the uh, reproduction. So what you see in the picture is the is the antique. So you know I'm down to here, and I've done a little tiny bit on the bottom. So this is a definitely want to finish. And let's see, I'm um, using 40 count sand dune. And here's the threads, they're very muted. All of these I've shown you at one time or another. This is another one, this is Little Birds. I'd like to just at least make some progress on this one. Little Birds by Blackbird. And I just have a little bit of the border, top border, coming around the corner. So I would like to definitely make some progress, even if it's just on the border on this one. And this one I'm using the called for, which is, um, it says it's Heartland. I, yeah, I guess it is Heartland. It looks a little bit more like Legacy, if I picture this plus, but I think it's, it is Heartland because it has a label in the bag. And this is the threads. These are the threads for that. Which are twisted up in a charm. There we go. So pretty muted, except there's one really bright red, and that is chili pepper. Hmm, talking about sneezing. Chili peppers. 
And the last one I'm going to show you that I want to work on is Sarah's house, which is a blackbird loose feathers from summer of 2012. I this would have to be on the secondary market. I love this. I stopped because I wasn't sure about my threads. Sarah's House by Blackbird in the book Sarah's House. This one I haven't gone very far at all. I'm doing it on a piece of, I think this is, uh, I think it's 40 count light exemplar, it looks like it. It could be parchment. No, it may be, I don't know. No, it's not a abecedarian because abecedarian, it calls for 30 count and I know this is a higher count. Anyway, not sure what, see I just have a little bit of the border. The border actually has two colors of what I would kind of call a teal. But when I compared them, they're supposed to have a little bit of contrast and mine are exactly the same. They're silks, that's what it calls for. So one of the silks is Ivy League and I have an older one and also a cream de mint that is, these are be, both classic color works bel so this older one is the darker the newer one is the lighter so I'm going to use the darker older one if I run out I'll use this cream de mint which is almost the same color so that is my plan I did have one other that I I didn't put in the bag that I wanted to. That is a blackbird. It's a loose feather called berry baskets, and it's long, thin, has three baskets. It's all one color. I think it's done in mulberry. I'll show that to you next time. Hopefully, maybe I can get to that and get it finished. It's about half half done. So that's my plan. This isn't a very long video. Told you it wouldn't be, but um, I wanted to at least do one. I thought about not doing one, but... I thought, well, at least I want to show those four finishes I had. And um, we're still working on my quilt video for my quilt sale. Um, part, of the, part of what's held us up is taking the pictures of the quilts. We have a small house and we don't have a lot of floor space. And so it's, you know, my husband's working on We've moved the couch. We're trying to figure out a way to accurately take pictures of the quilts so that you can not only see them, but you can comparably know the size of them. So I'm hoping, hoping, hoping in the next week I will get that video out. And um, I think at this point I have 14 maybe to sell. That's what I'm going to start with. And... They will be offered two different ways. Either you finish, which means you get the piece top, the backing, and the binding, or I finish, and you get a um, completely finished quilt. And of course, the price will be more for the, um, the ones I finish. So that's kind of what we've been working on, and hopefully we'll get it done this week. So that's part of it the other part is my husband is building a website so that it's all going to be purchased through the website so if you don't have instagram you don't have facebook you don't whatever you can still be able to go to the website and um, look at the quilts so that's the plan it's taken longer than we had hoped but you know we're trying to do it i guess you would say professionally <laughs> we're trying to meet in the middle as far as um you know because he's built websites before. He knows what, how they should look. I haven't, but I sort of have in my mind what I want. So, you know, sometimes it's compromising. So anyway, but it's all good. And hopefully that'll be out in the next week or so. So um, I hope you, I hope you all had a good 4th of July. That happened too during our two week break. So I hope you have a good 4th of July. If I do a video next week for quilts, then I may not be back for a while after that. In other words, I may not stay on 
stitching every two weeks. I don't know. We'll see. Life happens, so, you know, you just have to be willing to kind of go with the flow. So, anyway, hope you're all doing well, and I will see you sometime soon. <laughs> Love you. Bye.